Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and this week I am back at home but it is time to talk about AVC and how today how my featherweight went at AVC. So my featherweight was a brand new construction for AVC, there's some build videos on the channel I will link in the description down below. And I had never powered it up before I packed it into the suitcase and took it over to AVC. So it was a little bit nerve wracking uh, getting it there at AVC and taking it out of the box. Thankfully, I was there two days early, so I had a lot of time to put the robot back together and test it actually inside the arena. So here's just a quick little bit of footage showing the very, very first spin up of the robot. So what did we learn from that very first spin up? A, this thing looks so cool. It, like, I just, I love the look of the thing. I love it when the weapon gets up to speed. It looks really, really good. Uh, B, that with a slanted weapon like that, you get gyro forces in every single direction. So as you try and turn, the whole robot kind of like arcs up onto one wheel, much like a vertical spinner does. Also, as you try and drive forwards, the direction of the blade tries to steer you in that direction, which was a bit of an, an unusual thing for me. It wasn't something I was expecting, but it is uh, a thing that happens with this robot. Also, uh, C, when I was putting all the electronics in at AVC, I kind of messed up and my drive was backwards. So while I was sitting there, if I was pushing the stick to the left, the robot was turning, well, if I was pushing the stick to the right, the robot was turning to the left and vice versa. So that's never a good thing in a combat situation. You want to know that when you're going to push the stick one way, the robot's going to go the same way. So I told myself that uh, I would leave it for that night, but the next morning when I showed up, before fight started, I was going to quickly jump into the robot and replug some things and make sure that everything was okay for that first fight. Having said that, let's have a look at my first fight. So my first fight was up against Forged, which is a robot that is made out of cast aluminium. Now, cast aluminium can be a little bit brittle, so I was kind of hoping that I was going to get one good shot and just crack his entire chassis in one big blow. Well, let's take a look at what actually happened. So I did not last very long in that fight. Now, the, there are two kind of reasons for this, and both of them stem from that first test video that you saw just before. The first thing that I did wrong was I did not change my motors around, which meant that as the robot, as I was trying to drive forwards, the robot was curving to one side, and I was pushing the stick the other way to try and get it to curve back again, and I was actually pushing the robot further into spins, which is why I spent so much time kind of like spinning around underneath my own blade and not really moving very far. So I was having all sorts of difficulty driving and controlling it, and then the other thing that happened in that fight was that I actually sucked my own power link up into the weapon and destroyed it because I was using the same piece of duct tape to hold the power link down as I'd used in the testing the day before. So that was really not a good idea and part way through that fight with all of the jostling that was happening, that duct tape let go, the power link got sucked up and destroyed, which meant the robot got turned off very prematurely. So I took a couple of extra licks on the back before I'd realized what happened and tapped out and unfortunately, of course, lost that fight. So what did we do differently going into the second fight? Well, we basically swapped those motors back over 
and uh, had to re-solder that link because of course the old one was completely destroyed. Uh, and I brought a roll of duct tape with me this time to actually, when I was packing in or bumping the robot into the arena, I double duct taped over top of the link to make sure that thing was not going anywhere this time. It absolutely had nowhere to go. So the second fight was up against Mo Ferno, which was a big, very scary overhead horizontal spinner. They're a more traditional overhead horizontal spinner than I am. And realistically, I didn't have a strategy going into this one. It was literally just a case of spin the bar up and hit them and hope that them hitting me or like I hope that I hit them before they hit me essentially because that blade is really, really scary. They did manage to spin the blade up in the Twitch test. So let's take a look at the fight. So obviously in that fight, I got super lucky. Like I said at the start of the little clip there, they did spin their weapon up in the little twitch test, but they did not manage to get the weapon going for the actual fight itself, which kind of gave me free reign a little bit uh, to some extent there. I this, this was probably my best fight in all of ABC, to be perfectly honest. It was a good test of the weapon. It showed what the weapon can do when I get it up to speed. I wasn't even going full throttle on the weapon stick halfway through this fight, like when I ripped his front wedge off and caused him to tap out, I think the throttle was at about 60%. So there's still 40% worth of speed at the top end there that I could do some real damage with. Uh, but of course, I just didn't get it up that high. And I, it's kind of my fighting style. I'm a, I feather my stick up quite a lot when I fight. So I think we're going to do something about that moving into the next event we have for the 13 kilo robot. But but this event, that was an incredible fight. There's some really good hits there. Obviously, I rip his front wedge off. I rip his front wedge off so violently, in fact, that it hit the ceiling of the, of the arena and went through a pinata that they had hanging up there. Purposely done so that people would try and hit it. I wasn't even trying to hit it and I managed to hit it by ripping my opponent's front wedge off. Oh, that was a good fight. Um, and also, it meant that I earned another fight. So, ABC does uh, double, double elimination tournaments. So, you have your first fight in the first round, and if you win that, you stay in the winner's bracket and continue on fighting. If you ever lose a fight in the winner's bracket, you progress down into the loser's bracket. And if you lose a fight through the loser's bracket, you're out, you're done, that's it. You're, you're all going home, nothing is gonna happen for you. So I lost my first fight in the winner's bracket by blowing up my own switch. Um, then I was in the loser's bracket and I won that fight, which meant I get to keep pushing through the loser's bracket. It did, however, mean that I was gonna go face to face with Crippling Depression. Now, Crippling Depression, if you haven't seen this robot, is a very, very scary undercutter built by a fellow YouTuber, Robert Cohen, and I'll link his channel in the description as well. This thing can really take a punch, and its last couple of fights, or last couple of events, it has placed in every single one of those events, and it has dealt some serious damage, taken some serious damage, and this year, he brought in a brand new special weapon that I was kind of worried about. It was the right spot to completely shear the top of my weapon bolt if he so chose to put it on his robot. Thankfully for me, he, uh, I kept a close eye on him. I kept like glancing over at him nervously because his pit table was like just over there. I kept glancing at him nervously thinking, oh, this is going to be it. This is going to be him swapping over to that big scary weapon. Thankfully for me, he did not do that. Uh, so yeah, I, I was kind of 
a little relieved about that going into this fight. Also, going into this fight, I did realize that I'd angled the camera a little bit wrong and you couldn't see the other side of the box so well, so I lifted the camera up a little bit, then I cleaned up the smudge that was on the, uh, the first little bit. And then I went into this crippling depression fight, still very scared. This is a very, very powerful robot, but I knew that if I wanted to uh, progress any further in the tournament, I had to win this fight. So that was a quick fight and because I changed the angle of that camera we can really not see what went on in this fight. So thank you so much to Phil from Team Cerberus because he managed to capture another angle of this fight and because it's so, such a short fight I'm going to show you the whole fight again from a different angle and you'll get a better understanding of uh, just how I lost this one. And there you go, that's it. That's, I, I bounced out of the arena. I bounced off my own weapon and out of the arena. He just like, ugh, I just, I got all the angles wrong and all of the hits that happened in that very, very brief fight and ended up pillow boxed. Pillow boxed? Yeah, pillow boxed outside the arena, sandwiched between the steel kick plate and the Lexan, which it's, it's one of the, I guess most spectacular ways to go out, but it also, as a, a builder, it's one of the most disappointing ways to go out. That fight had the potential to be really, really good, and I was getting some good shots on him before I managed to uh, knock myself out of the arena completely. Uh, yeah, so it's a very unfortunate way to lose, but it is still a loss never, nevertheless, which means that that's it. I'm now out of uh, AVC, and... A 1-2 and two record is not a great record, but it's better than what I hoped for. Going into this competition, there were a lot of fierce robots sitting on the pit tables waiting to go into that arena. So I was very, very convinced I was going to be a, an 0-2 and two robot for AVC. So managing to have one win under my belt is very, very promising. And it gives me hope because I'm going to fight very, very obvious again in a couple of weeks time in Australia at Australian Nationals. Now, because I've done AVC, I have some insight into how the robot drives. I have some practice and some preparation. And also, I'm going to up the voltage on the weapon motor, which means that the weapon is going to be spinning faster so that when I drive as I normally do and feather my throttle up, not only am I gonna spin up faster, but putting my weapon at 60%, is going to give me all of the speed that I would have had at 100% throttle with the current battery setup. So that means that the robot is not only going to get the weapon up to speed faster, but the one that is up to speed, it is going to hit way harder. Also, as a very quick note, uh, the Australian Robot Wars Arena does not have a huge gap between the kick plate and the Lexan, which means I can't get pillar box this time. I can't end up in between there like I did in the Robert Cohen fight. So while that one was unlucky, it's almost kind of lucky in a way because it means the robot never really sustained that much damage. There's a few nicks and scrapes here and there, but nothing that is gonna stop me from putting it into the competition in two weeks time. Yeah, so there you go, that's how I did at ABC. Not great, but I never really do great at these things. At, at the very most, my robots seem promising until I've had a couple of good goes at iterating them and getting them right. So we've had ABC now, we've got a chance to iterate, we've got a chance to improve, and we'll try again at Australian Nationals and see how those improvements work out. I'm not expecting great things at Nationals, I'm thinking that we're gonna have another iteration before we get to something that's really competitive, but at least we've got the chance to iterate already. That's a, that's a very, very good thing. Next week, we are going to go into how I went with my beta weights with Annie, are you okay? 
that video, yeah, there's, uh, there's some interesting hits in that video. So look forward to that one, and I will see you in next week.